think it's time we did a proper shop talk. And this morning I have cause to give one. If you guys have been following along, then you know, at my own doing, this little guy bit the dust. Um, totally my fault. And it's unfortunate because in the way of, I, I guess, um, tabletops, small compressors that are designed almost specifically for crafting, and in this case, airbrushing, this little TC40 tankless has been really, really good. It's a trooper. It's over three years strong. And I never had a problem with it until the iced tea episode. But again, my fault. So what I've done is I disconnected the pressure switch that has the moisture trap. And then at the recommendations of colleagues, specifically Novik, got a proper compressor. Now this is the first time that I have used a real air compressor. It's a little bit different of a beast. Um, so you and I are gonna go through this process of setting it up together. I've already put the wheels on. That's super simple. This is an eight gallon. The model is the uh, California Air Tools 8010. It does have an eight gallon tank on it. Does not have a moisture trap built in. It is an oilless, which means no oil is needed to filter through this. But it does have a drain located on the very bottom of the tank. And we are going to show you everything to set this puppy up. This is gonna be a learning process for me because I've never done it before. But it looked fairly simple. I've gotten some really good direction from Gerald and a few others um, in, the, in the airbrushing community that use, honest to goodness, real compressors to do their work. I see two gauges on it. I see a red nozzle in front of me that's got, uh, I'm sure that's the pressure, how I regulate pressure. Now, just in basic um, walking around the unit, I can see that there's several different um, warnings, hazard indicators. This is the on-off switch. Pushing it back is going to bring it to uh, an on position. The forward is an off position. You switch to start and stop compressor. That's easy. Warning. What's this one say? Do not adjust factory settings. To reduce risk of electrical shock, do not remove cover. Pressure control is set at factory, maximum safe operation. Now, one thing that it, I will say about this and getting it, the user's manual isn't very user-friendly. It gives you basics and troubleshooting, but it tells you nothing about regulating pressure. So I'm assuming, and you guys can, and be, you can be my guides here, that it's the same. Counterclockwise reduces the pressure, turning this up, um, juices the, the pressure up. It does have a warning indicator. My warning indicator in the red here is at 120. Looks like it's got a max pressure of 180. My hose that I got, um, unfortunately and fortunately, I got a hose that was 3 8 This comes with a one quarter, or a quarter inch, and this is the speed coupler. And I, through talking to Gerald, realized who's given this? Okay, that was Chewbacca, a.k.a. Sir Pounce. Um, this is a speed coupler, and this is for just proper air tools. So I need a converter because my airbrush runs an eighth inch, not the quarter inch. So that's one thing. Um, second thing is, because this is uh, a speed coupler, I have to get a bunch of attachments. So I went out, I did that, I spent about 60 bucks at Home Depot, um, because you need things like that, apparently, to run this and uh, we'll go from there so when we um, when we get into the tank itself I'm gonna pull this out because it's on wheels I want to show you guys the drainage it's a quarter turn drain I've noticed and that's on the bottom of the unit so I'm gonna set this up on its backside here 
And that is the drain. Now, I don't know how frequently you guys um, clean the drain or release the water, but it will build up water inside of here. Now, in addition, there's an air filter. If you're looking at the front of the unit, this is the front. If you walk to the back of the unit, this is the air filter. It's got an intake little plastic pipe that fits in to the filter itself. And then it was a real easy screw in process to get this into the back motor. So you just screw that on, pop in your little intake valve um, tube, and you're good to go. And that's gonna filter clean air into the unit. And the wheels were super easy to put on. It took like three seconds. Just tilt this up on its back and put your wheels on, lock them down in place, make sure you're using the washers. Okay. This big blue hose. It's not the size I needed. The size I needed was a quarter inch. Because that's what that's got on that speed coupler, the quarter inch. What this is is a three eighths. However, I did get some conversions, uh, some adapters. So I will be able to do things like pressure wash and inflate tires and there's all sorts of stuff. So I'm not gonna return this, but I did pick up, here comes the accessories part, $60 later at Home Depot. I did pick up all the stuff that I need to get me started. So we're gonna go through this bag right now. Before we get through the bag, one thing, I was gonna make another common mistake because my other air compressor, a little tabletop, was real low, and this is real low as well, but this specifically says, don't use an extension cord. Now luckily I have an outlet right back there. You guys can see that from here. And I have a small AC unit that I don't use in the winter. And then the top one, I have a heater that's plugged in now. So I'm gonna unplug my AC unit, not the ventilation unit, but the AC unit. I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna put this in. And then when I need that AC unit this summer, I won't need my heater. So problem solved, that's not gonna be an issue. Yeah, it's a box of crayons, uh, you know. Now, another thing real quick, taking the moisture trap off of my old airbrush compressor was pretty easy. Uh, and they look like they're standard eighth inch. I'm gonna run a wire metal brush in this because it looks like you get right up on it. There's some rust. Again, this, this unit's three years old um, and I, I never had a problem with it. But the other cool thing is it has an independent pressure regulator on it. So if this is still at all useful, certainly gonna be able to use it for the moisture trap, but I might be able to use this as an additional regulator that's gonna be right here at the spray bench. So we'll see how that goes. But let's get into this bag. I got the right, it's a Husky connection. This cost about $15 and it's 25 feet more than enough because I'm actually going to be um, coupling this with my eighth inch braided for the airbrush. But this is, looks like it's two connectors that are identical on either side. The other one's on the inside of this. You can't really see it real well, but it's down there. And then we got the bag of goodies. And as uh, Mr. Novick was telling me this morning, more is not less, more is more, and I can always take stuff back that I don't need. And if I'd have probably been more confident, I would have been able to go to the plumbing department instead of the air compressor area because this is probably twice the price of what I would have paid for some of the same connections in plumbing. However, this is specifically designed for air compressors, so I'm not too concerned about it. But there's some stuff that I, I definitely don't think that I need at this point. For example, this is a dual mount analog gauge. I don't need another gauge. That would give me three gauges and that kind of seems pointless. The cool thing about this is it does have my female to female connections. The threads are on the outside instead of the inside. So I do have some useful stuff. And of course, <laughs> I'm sure they do it on purpose. Um, I've got useful stuff in each one, but not everything that's in these I'm going to be able to make use of right away. This has got some eighth inch connections. And these are all brass fittings, and it also has a speed connector right here for the air tools, as I was informed. This is a T connector. 
This is gonna allow me to run both guns at the same time, or at least have two output hoses. This is probably one of the most beneficial things that I have because it's got both the interior threads and the exterior threads for the quarter ounce or the, the quarter inch. So this is going to be beneficial as well. So we're going to take all of this stuff out of the packages. I am saving the receipt in case there's stuff that just isn't right or doesn't work. And this is going to be the initial piece. This is the quarter inch. This is a little coupler. This is this part goes into the compressor itself. And then that side comes out and will attach to the preliminary hose. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run the this coupler into the air compressor. I'm going to run the quarter inch out of here, make the connection for the moisture trap at the connection where I'm reducing my hose size from quarter inch to eighth inch and then I'll run my eighth inch airbrush hose and airbrush out of that. It sounds easy, let's hope it is. Step one, that should just pop right in, should. Does it? No? Let's see. It did pop right in. I just couldn't do it with one hand, so I had to put the put the I'm filming with the iPhone this morning because I don't feel like setting up all the camera equipment for this. Um, but yep, it's locked into place. The speed connection, you push this back. You gotta use both hands, push back because it's a real tight fit, and then put this in. This is locked in and it's not going anywhere. So that's we're good to go on this. And then if you want to re remove this and change it out then you would just push this in again. So you can see it pops right out. The next step is gonna be setting this up to connect to the inside of this. And luckily this thing turns. I guess if I'd have been thinking, I probably would have <laughs> attached it before putting it in. And I still might just to tighten this up a little bit, but this is turning just fine. The only thing that I want to make sure is that it's snug enough and in well enough to where I'm not getting any leaks from it. And that seems to be good to go. That's tight. Yeah, that's good. The next step is going to be to make some connections. I needed a couple of different packages to do that, obviously because I'm a noob at this, but that's okay. Um, more is more for this particular purpose. And what I've done, since I have extra hosing, those 25 feet, I certainly don't need that, but it's not gonna hurt anything either. Um, I have these racks set up here in the studio to where I can just hang it right there. So that's until I can come up with a better solution, that's where that's gonna go. So now, I need to connect this and then convert that. So I've got a brass fitting here that's gonna allow me to make the connection from the hose and then from the quarter down to the eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that together. There's the one. And it does seem to have a tight fit. I do have some pliers here just to make sure, but that seems to be a, a tight fit. And then we're gonna bring this and convert from the quarter inch down to the eighth inch. And this should, should fit right in. It looks like it's got some, uh, I wanna make sure that I'm not putting that into any kind of a situation where it's going to strip, but there's that. Okay, so I think everything else is good. I've got that hooked up right, going into there, holding that there. Then I come over, I've got my adapter, the coupler there. And then I'm gonna run the trap, which does work by the way. 
to run the trap, but I need the eighth to eighth. That's the one thing that I'm missing. And then we should be good, at least for one gun, for now. Now, trip number two. Trip number two. I was missing one piece, just one. And look at that, all shiny, and it's a good fit. So I'll probably put just a little bit of tape, um, like plumber's tape, to make sure the threading is real, real good and that it doesn't lose any air in it. But uh, I think we can put this thing together and get back in gear. Okay, so I'm back from Home Depot and I think I've got everything set up right. But we're gonna do a test run first because that's what it says to do. And since I've never used one before, but anyways, this is, this is the setup we've got. So um, I have it disconnected now, but this is the speed connection. This is the piece that actually goes into the air compressor right there, that little spot right there. So that comes out and runs to the hose. We have a quarter inch to quarter inch coupler, which is the female part. And then I have a conversion from a quarter inch down to an eighth inch. Then we have another coupler, which I've tested. Uh, it's got, everything's fitting real tight. I've got this coupler that's attached to the moisture trap, which also has a pressure indication. And then down to my airbrush hose. So that should be a good deal, but we got to do a test run first. That's what it says to do. I've got the unit plugged into the wall because they said you absolutely cannot use an extension cord for this, which is fine. So it plugs into a regular, regular 110, 120 wall mount. And I think we're ready to turn it on. So haven't touched the factory settings. Nothing is attached to this. We're gonna turn this on and uh, see what we've got. Now this should start and kick in. It's, it's, uh, it says it's whisper quiet, sort of, ultra quiet. Hmm. Okay. And it is starting to gain pressure. Now this is supposed to get up to the 120. I'm not yelling, I'm not screaming, I'm in my own voice. Both of these gauges should be the same. And then the unit should kick off when it hits 120. Now if it kicks off before that, probably in shipping, this regulator might have gotten moved to the counterclockwise position, but because I do understand regulators, I'll be able to make sure that this is a good deal. So this one's reading right around, what is that, 60? So it's 30, 60, 90, 120 should kick off when it gets to 120 or thereabouts. Both of them are reading the same thing. It's not loud. Um, I have this at my level right now and it's not loud. And it'll kick off as soon as it fills to where it's supposed to fill. We're right about at 80 seconds. It's supposed to fill to 120 in 130 seconds. So just over two minutes. about there and it should kick off just like clockwork I wasn't expecting that little hiss but 
it's kicked off exactly where it was supposed to. Now because that's a test run, there's nothing in it. There's the safety. And the safety is good. I hope I didn't startle anybody, but I knew I had to do that. I wasn't expecting it to be quite that loud, but that's 120 pounds of pressure. So that is the safety valve. And if you ever get into a situation where it's not kicking off and it's not kicking off, you can pull this just like you're pulling a grenade pen and that pressure will come out. That's what it's supposed to do. Now it does dial back to about 60. So there we have it. The next step is to put it all back together, release all that air. I'm gonna put it one more time all the way up to 120 and we should be good. So now the last thing for me to do is to turn this on again and then we're going to adjust the regulator on this. Once I adjust that regulator, that's going to be this gauge. It's directly hooked up to the regulator. I'll bring you down here so you guys can see it better. This is going to tell me how much pressure is in the tank. This adjusts what comes out. So this is going to be max 60 and then I think I can re-regulate it through where my moisture trap is. So let's kick this on, get it up to speed. Um, here we go. It is pretty quiet. So I, ha I have the camera up here at my head level, I'm not having to yell. This is going to come up to speed here about two minutes, maybe a little more. Okay, it's just kicked off. Now we're going to kick this back to the desired level of output. And there we have it, just by adjusting this turning it counterclockwise and you can I'm going to pull this back you guys can see that it will adjust to how I want it well, we're going to pull it back here I'm going to pull it back all the way to 30 that's my output this is still reading right around 120 110 you never want to adjust the factory settings for this Time to get all this stuff cleaned up and get back to airbrush. And thanks for hanging out today. It was a, an actual shop talk setting up this California Air Tools 8010 compressor. Again, big thanks to Gerald Novick for uh, walking me through the process and showing me your setup. I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. So what's missing? <laughs> that every five second, when the tank kicks on, not gonna miss that. So far, this is awesome.